Good evening. We are going to start another session. And we are in session number three. Uh, we are going to have just one more session and tomorrow. And we are going to end week number two. So we are going to start with a this session. Yesterday we were talking about a very um, interesting topic because we were talking about so to neither in either that are words that we can use for different uh, purposes in this case when we are talking about a positive and negative uh, statements that are true or not for us so yesterday we were uh, seeing in which cases we can um, use as those words and the last thing that we were learning was the examples with neither and either that are negative sentence. Now we are going to see the um, the other face of the um, of the coin, if we can say it like that. Or we are going to say uh, we are going to see the positive uh, statements, and we are going to see the use of so and with examples. Then we are going to have um, uh, some exercise in which you are going to decide which option is the best for the sentence that we have. In that case, we are just going to use, so um, we can say, so do I, and neither do I, but in that case, um, remember that we are going to use the auxiliary that we are using or the structure that we are using for the statement. So in that case, we are going to have um, some uh, phrases in which you are going to decide uh, what is the best option for the sentence. And then we are going to uh, see other topics that is the use of uh, will and will. But first we are going to have like, uh, another exercise, but in that case, the exercise is going to be uh, auto one that we are going to um, read a conversation. We are going to um, hear the pronunciation and also we are going to practice that conversation. So we are going to have two exercises today. One is um, about so do I and, and neither do I. And the other exercise is an oral exercise in which you are going to practice the conversation. So we are going to begin and I'm going to share the screen. So let me have the screen for you. Here we have the document in which we have our information. So let's see. We are going to the end because we need to see the, exercise, the examples that we had. That is this one. That are the negative one in which we were saying the both uses of um, neither and either. In the uh, person A, we have like the sentence or the situation that people is telling to us. And then we have two options to answer those uh, things that the person A is saying. In a uh, person B or the first um, answer, we have neither. And in the second uh, way to answer, we have either. In that case, when we are using either, we need to focus or we need to keep in mind that in that case, we need to have almost the same statement as the person A. But we are going to add something at the end. Así que para estas eh, frases donde la persona A es la que habla 
y nos eh, está diciendo, ¿verdad? Las oraciones, ya sea en negativo o positivo, pero en este caso son negativas. Eh, en la respuesta de la sentence, o en este caso podríamos llamarle la persona C, la oración tiene que concordar con lo que está diciendo la persona A. Por eso es que al inicio es casi igual la oración. Como en el primer ejemplo, I am not hungry, y el ejemplo de la respuesta de la persona C, I'm not hungry, that is the same sentence, but we are going to add either at the end. So in that case, we need to uh, remember that if we are using neither is a short uh, answer, that is neither am I, neither are you, neither do I, neither can I, and all of the things that we can use to answer uh, with that experience. And in the next uh, or in the other um, answer, kind of answer, we need to say the um, almost the, the whole sentence, but adding either at the end. Now we are going to see the examples for so and to that positive sentence. So in this case, we are going to say positive. And we are going to have so and to. And it says that so and to are used to show agreement with positive statements. That is say by the person A in this case of the examples that we have here. So we have now the structure. And it says so plus auxiliary. Plus the subject. In this case, the auxiliary can be the or have. And now we're going to see the person A, the person B, and the other way to answer. So here we have a person A, person B in our sentence. So for the person A, we have the following sentence. That is a, a simple present sentence. And it says, I am happy. I am happy. And person B can answer, so am I. And in the sentence, we can say, I am happy to. Así que vamos siempre, ¿verdad? Haciendo que concuerde el auxiliar en las dos respuestas. Si llevo am, que es el verbo to be, el auxiliar. In my answer, my short answer. I am going to use the same auxiliary. So am I. And in the sentence, again, because I am using the same sentence, I going to use the verb to be. In that case, we are following the same structure. Number two, you are making a noise. You are making a noise. And we have the person B. So are you. Because we're using the verb to be again. 
And for the next one, it says, you are making a noise too. Next one, I need more money. And in this case, we know that uh, this structure is um, a present simple sentence, because in that case, we are not going to use um, a different verb or a different tense, because we are saying, I need more money in the present time. So in that case, we are going to use the uh, auxiliary do in uh, the answer. We don't know the, um, we don't have the uh, auxiliary in the sentence, but for the response, we are going to use the auxiliary verb to uh, let people know that we are using the present tense. So in this case, we are going to answer, so do I. And the other one is, I need more money too. Then we have another example, and it says, a Steve like this one. And in this case, again, we are using a present simple. And we are going to use the auxiliary do. In this case, we are going to change because we are going to use another subject. So, does Mary. And in the next sentence, we have Mary likes pizza too. I was fired this morning. I was. In that case, we are using Past. So I'm going to use the same structure in my answer. So was I. And for the long sentence, I was fired too. Then we have, we were late. We were Late. Again, we are using the past of the verb to be. We are going to use the same structure in the answer. So were they. And in the long sentence, they were late too. Another one, and it says, I watched a movie last night. So in that case, we don't have the auxiliary, but we know that in that cases, we are going to use the auxiliary do to make the answer. But in this case, we are seeing that we have this verb in past. So in that case, we are going to use the auxiliary to in past. So in this case, we are going to use this. So did I. And for the long sentence, I watched a movie too. Así que para este tipo de oraciones tenemos que fijarnos bien, ¿verdad? En los verbos que se están eh, utilizando en la oración, los auxiliares que estamos utilizando para poder así crear nuestra respuesta. Como les decía, hay ejemplos que no tienen un auxiliar. Por ejemplo, Steve likes pizza o I watch a movie last night. En este caso, solo tenemos los verbos. 
que son los que nos van a decir a nosotros eh, en qué momento, ¿verdad? Está sucediendo esta acción. En la primera, pues sabemos que es presente, like. Así que vamos a utilizar el auxiliar do para responder. Cuando estamos utilizando el, el so. En el otro, pues obviamente volvemos a poner la oración y le agregamos to. En el siguiente, I was a movie last night. Sabemos que el verbo está en pasado. Entonces nosotros tenemos que responder en pasado también. En este caso vamos a cambiar el auxiliar y le vamos a poner did. We're going to end the examples in a couple of sentences. So we are going to finish this part. Then it says she can play the guitar. In this case, we are using can. So in an in the answer, we are going to use can in that case. So can I. And in the long sentence, I can play two. Next one. We could see this part. We could see the stars. In this case, we are using cool. So for the answer, we are going to use cool. So cool, I. And in the long, in the long sentence, I could see the stars too. Next one. She will win an award. She will. In that case, we are using will, so we are going to use will for the answer. So will I. And for the long one, I will win. Two. And the last one, I would like a cup of coffee. I would like a cup of coffee. So we are going to use would. So would I. And the long one, I would like a cup too. So in that case, we have the examples in, in which we can use the same structures for the answer. So remember that when we are using neither, either, so, and to, for the answers, we are going to use the same structure of the sentence that person A is saying. So in that case, if, we, if person A is using an auxiliary, we are going to use the same auxiliary to answer that sentence. We are not going to change the auxiliary because in that case it's not going to be very good. So we have two uh, ways in which we can answer um, that statement that people is saying. We have the short um, answer and the long sentence. That is uh, depending on the way that you um, you prefer to answer. This is not like a, you have just one option. In that case, you have two, and you are going to use the one that you prefer or like, depending on the situation in which you are talking with someone. So, something that you need to remember, the auxiliary verb depends on it is the verb to be or is to have, needs to agree, with the verb tense in the original statement. Así que nuestro auxiliar, que sea be, o sea have, o sea, en este caso, el auxiliar do, 
tiene que concordar, ¿verdad? Con el tiempo que estamos utilizando en nuestra oración. Si estamos utilizando una oración positiva, no vamos a responder en una... Eh, quiero decir, si estamos usando una oración presente, no vamos a responder con una oración en pasado. Si estamos hablando de una oración en pasado, no vamos a responder con una oración en futuro. Y si estamos usando una oración en futuro, no vamos a responder con una oración en pasado. Tiene que ser, ¿verdad? Del mismo tiempo y con el mismo auxiliar. Para que sea, ¿verdad? Una conversación fluida. Now, we are going to see the, um, the sentence. I have 10 sentences in which you are going to choose. What is the best option for this sentence? Diez oraciones. Vamos a escoger cuál de las dos opciones es mejor para nuestra oración. Recuerden, neither, either. En este caso solo vamos a utilizar neither. Neither es para oraciones negativas. O sea, negativas para nosotros también. Um, so es para oraciones positivas. Entonces, vamos a ver de qué manera vamos a responder. So, we are going to see the example or the sentence that we are going to see. So, let me take this to another page. So, we have the exercise. We have number one and it says, I can play the piano. Number two, Catherine is English. But we're going to, say, to do something. We are going to put a name, Jenny. That is the person A in this case. And then we are going to write me. That is the person that is answering. In that case, you are going to say, Uh, you're going to say the answer for the statement. So, Catherine is English. Then I'm going to write me. Then I'm going to write number Okay, I think it's going to rain in a couple of minutes because it's light. We have some evidence of that. So I think it's going to be very hard to uh, finish the, um, the session because we're going to have like this situation in, I mean, we are going to have like something like this in, in the whole uh, session because it's going to rain and in that situation it's very hard to work with the connection because it's kind of uh, low. So I'm going to continue with the sentence. She isn't coming to the party. Four. And it says, Lucy will come early tomorrow. Number five. She doesn't have any brothers or sisters. Number six.
I've been to Mexico. Number seven. I'm going home now. Number eight. I didn't pass the exam. Number nine, David is living in Mumbai. And we have the last one that is number 10. And it says, I want to have a cake just now. So we have here the sentence or the statement, and you need to know what is the best option for them. Ahí están 10 oraciones. Vamos a darles un momento para que decidan cuál es la opción o la mejor opción de respuesta. Es so o es neither. And also you need to choose use the auxiliaries and the tense of the sentence. So I will give you a couple of minutes and then you are going to tell me what is the answer for that sentence.
answer for those statements. So, in the first one, I can play the piano. That is a negative statement. What is the possible answer that we can give to that sentence? Neither can I. Ah, that's good. Neither can I. So the next one, Catherine is English. That is a positive statement. What is the possible answer that we can give to that sentence? Um, I'm so sorry, I just listened something and then it disappears. So we are going to continue and we are going to hear again the answer because this thing is not working well. So what is the answer for the second one again? So am I? Good, so am I. Number three, she isn't coming to the party. Negative, what is the possible answer for that statement? Neither am I. Ah, good, neither am I. Correct. Number four, Lucy will come early tomorrow. Positive statement using the future. What is the possible answer? So will I. So will I. Good, so will I. Number five, she doesn't have any brothers or sisters. Negative statement, what is the possible answer? Neither do I. Good, neither do I. Number six, I've been to Mexico. Uh, in this case, is positive. What is the possible answer for this statement? So have I. Ah, good. So have I. Seven, I'm going home now. Positive statement, what is the answer? So am I. Good, so am I. Number eight, I didn't pass the exam. That is a, a negative statement using did. So in that case, it's passed. What is the possible answer? Neither did I. Neither did I. Good. So the case is not necessary that we use the negative because um, we're just using and the, uh, the auxiliary. So next one, number nine, we are almost done. David is living in Mumbai. What is the possible answer for that statement? So am I. Good, so am I. And the last one. I won't have a cake just now. This is a negative and it is used in future. So what is the possible answer? Neither will I. Good, perfect. That's good. Thank you for the participation. And we have the first um, exercise. Now, we are going to hear a conversation that is called ordering a meal. In that conversation, we are going to um, 
hear and see because we are going to read and we are going to hear the conversation. We are going to uh, see uh, the use of mobile verbs and also we are going to practice that conversation. So give me a second. I'm going to change this and I will uh, look for the, uh, the video in which we have the conversation. And you have to listen the pronunciation and all of that, and then we are going to have a practice. So let me have the video for you. And in the meantime, remember that you need to work on the platform because you have like, um, you need to have section one, two, and three, I guess. And, and you are going to see if you are uh, doing uh, the exercises tomorrow, I guess. So you need to work on the platform. And in this case, you are going to see some of the videos that we have there. And it's going to be useful for you to answer the exercises that you have on the platform. So I have here the video and I'm going to play for you and we are going to hear the conversation twice. Then we are going to see some of the uh, model verbs that we are going to uh, use in in the conversation, and then we are going to have the practice. So give me, let me see. I think it's not working well. Okay, I'm here again. So let's go to the video. Hello everyone, I want you to pay attention to the following conversation. We will now listen to the model verbs would and will. As always, try to practice the conversation with a friend. Listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes, I'd like the lamb kebabs. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Practice the conversation with a friend. Listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes, I'd like the lamb kebabs. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. And would you like... Okay, we have here the conversation that is called ordinary a meal. So we have two uh, people in that conversation. And one of these uh, people is ordering something and the other is taking the order. So in that case, we are using the, um, the model verbs. In that case, we can uh, have some examples. But let me take this because I think it's going to be kind of heavy for the connection. So I'm going to change from the platform to the document in which I have the uh, conversation to. So I'm going to put the image in which we have the conversation and we are going to read the examples and the sentences to understand and find where are the mother verbs. So here we have the conversation and it says the waiter and the customer and we have the first sentence. 
may I take your order? In that case, we are using the modal verb may. So we have the example. I'm going to write it like in the previous example in which we were like writing the sentences like this. So first one, may I take your order? Then it says, yes, I would like the lamb kebab. I would like. And in this case, we have this construction. I like the lamb kebab. Let's see. All right. And would you like a salad? We have another expression. Would you like a salad? Then it says, yes, I will have a mixed green salad. Okay, what kind of dressing would you like? What kind of dressing would you like? We're using another one. What kind of dressing would you like? You see? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? And we have the other question. Would you like anything to drink? And the last one, yes, I would like a large iced tea, please. So in that conversation, we have a lot of uh, sentences in which we are using the model verb. We have two, four, and six. May I take your order? I would like the lamb kebab. Would you like a salad? What kind of dressing would you like? Would you like anything to drink? And I'd like a large iced tea, please. So that is the conversation that we are going to practice right now. So we have two people in the conversation. Um, you are going to choose a partner with, um, you're going to practice the conversation. So we have, may I take your order? That is the first uh, sentence. Yes, I like the lamb kebab. All right, and um, would you like a salad? Yes, I will have a mixed green salad. Okay, what kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Uh, blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I like a lot. I see, please. So that is the conversation. If you can take like uh, screenshots of the conversation, it will be very, very nice because you're going to use this conversation for the practice. And we are going to uh, have like uh, breakout rooms and in that breakout room, you're not going to see the conversation. So you can take a screenshot of the conversation uh, to um, practice. Si pueden tomarle la captura a la conversación para tenerla ustedes, eh, porque vamos a partir el grupo en pequeños eh, grupos para que puedan practicar la conversación. Así que si pueden tomar la, la captura en este momento, estaría perfecto porque ya voy a designar lo que son los, los rooms. Okay, I think it's time. We are going to stop this and we are going to have the breakout rooms in which you are going to practice that conversation um, you are going to 
you're going to um, find a partner in a, with um, that person you're going to practice. So you can decide if you're going to be the waiter or the customer. So we are going to create a small, we have, let me see, some hands. We are going to have four. Okay, so um, notification is going to appear in your screen. So you are going to um, click on that and you're going to go to your room. So let's go. Carmen, you need to go to your room to the practice. No. Okay. Me and Claudia? Yes. Okay. I take your order. Um, keyboard. All right. And and will I think it no veo. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I I have a mixed green salad. Okay, what kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese. Um, no sé cómo se dice. Vinagre. 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 Uh, blue cheese, please. Um, would you like anything to drink? Yes, I like a large iced tea, please. Okay, let's go, Margarita and Daisy. Sin inicio. Daisy. Hola. Okay, creo que no tiene señal. Okay, let's go, nosotros, Margarita. Okay. May I take your order? Yes, I like the Lambert Quebec. All right. And will you like a salad? Yes, I have a mixed green salad. Okay, what can the dressing will be like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And will you like anything to drink? Yes, I like a large iced tea, please. Do you like anything to dim? Yes, I like a large iced tea, please. Again, please. May I take your order? Repetimos? Yes. 
Alba? Uh, I like the order. Yes, I like the land kivas. I read and want to like a salad. Yes, I have a mixed green salad. Okay, well, feel on this is good to like. Kind, kind. What kind? What kind of spaces would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Uh -huh. Blue cheese, please. I would you like anything to drink? Yes, I like a large iced tea, please. Hello, everyone. That is the conversation. May I take the order? Aquí tengo, por ejemplo, in the section. Uh, ah, is that? Just a teacher, it's, just a uh, teacher. Teacher, uh, I have consulta. a question. Tell me. What is the correct pronunciation of vinagrette? Ah, lamb kip and vinagrette. Lamb kebab. Lamb kebab. Lamb kebab. Lamb kebab. kebab. Lamb kebab. Lamb kebab. Lamb Vinagrette. Mm -hmm. Vinagrette. Sí, esas dos eran las que teníamos duda de pronunciación. Sí, en el caso del lamb kebab, como es un plato, es un, es un platillo específico, eh, por eso tiene esa. Puede ser de diferentes pronunciaciones, pero lamb kebab, así como aparece ahí, lamb kebab. kebab. Okay, we are going to leave the breakout rooms in a second. So give me a moment and I will send the uh, notification for returning to the main session. Thank you for your participation. Okay. Okay. Okay, we are coming back to the main session from the breakout room. So we are waiting for the other participants to come back. But in this case, it is not, uh, we are going to wait a, a lot because in that case, we have just 16 seconds to close all the breakout rooms. So we have now five seconds. Okay. So that was a really good um, activity because you have the opportunity to read the conversation and practice with the other participants. Uh, reading the, uh, the words that we have in the conversation. And I know that some of you found uh, some words kind of complicated. That's the way, because we are going to practice the pronunciation of the words. So uh, it was really good to uh, listen to you practicing the conversation. It was really, really good. So we are going to end this session and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the last session for the week number two. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Thank good you. Thanks. Good, good night. night.
Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.